Weber wanted to do well on home turf. But a whack from Barrichello sent him into Heidfeld and Kovalainen and got him in a right mess. Heidfeld, Sutil and Weber all stopped for repairs at the end of the first lap. He ran wide, hit the kerb and lost the rear. And that brought out the safety car. Fisichella was so used to being at the end of the pit lane, he overshot his box. Four months have passed since Ferrari just missed out on the championship. Both cars did their best to keep going, but they didn't last long. was fast on the harder tyres while Vettel struggled on the softer ones. He tried to defend but had no grip to avoid a collision. BMW Sauber felt a podium at least had been in sight. Vettel tried to keep going but it was not to be. However, his endeavours were not approved by the stewards who handed the team a fine. He started 14th, but he didn't even make it around the first lap. Again! Rain had started to fall. Massa struggled on dry tyres. The rain was now torrential. Fisichella was caught out. As was Fettel. I guess Sebastian, hang in there. It's raining hard now. And the car goes off. Same shit. Car is off. Race is over. The Toro Rosso of Boemi was next. Light was fading fast, just like Hamilton's level of grip. This is undrivable. There's puddles, aquaplaning everywhere. It's unbelievable. A clever strategy meant Heidfeld only stopped once, but it didn't stop him from being caught out. I cannot drive. White flag, please. The track was beginning to resemble a swimming pool. Just staying afloat was a challenge. Red flag, red flag. The teams prepared for a long wait on the grid. There would be much confusion and delay if there was to be a restart, but things did not improve. I need a white visor, please come on, white visor, otherwise I cannot see anything. Felipe baby, stay cool, we're bringing you the white visor, stay cool, we're in a good position, okay? We're bringing you the visor. It wasn't just about the rain, the rapidly decreasing light in Sepang could present huge problems. <laughs> Preparations continued for a restart, but not everyone was convinced. A problem with the isolation of the Kurs had made the decision for Kimi. To the amusement of Timo. <laughs> they were running out of daylight. Moments later, Jensen Button was declared the winner and half points were awarded. was also in turmoil. They opted to remove Kurs from their cars following the reliability issues they suffered in Malaysia. There was lots of standing water and he lost the ground he had worked hard to gain. And was lucky not to get hit.
Timo was lucky to continue after this tangle with Heifel. But their teammates were not so fortunate. Kubica caught his team out. Why, why are you in the pit? As I close. There was no room for error in those conditions as Rosberg found out to his peril. And he couldn't stop himself aquaplaning into retirement. He still hadn't improved on that running technique since Montreal last year. Massa found himself squeezed between Barrichello and Raikkonen. And that left him needing to stop for repairs. They weren't the only ones who got into trouble. He established the lead into turn one, but there was chaos behind as Trulli went wide, off track, avoiding Rosberg. Both Sutil and Trulli ran wide and could not avoid each other. The Toro Rossos? Well, they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Hamilton was lucky to get held up at the start. He had a good view of the mayhem and managed to avoid the shards of carbon fibre. What are you doing here? I don't know. What are you doing here? Get up there. Get up there. <laughs> hey. Bad luck, mate. Yeah, yeah. How did he get there? Sorry. No, 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 no. Felipe f***ing... Uh, sorry. Felipe... <laughs> that's okay, that's sorry, Australia. Australia. <laughs> Move Australia. Australia. Drivers after qualifying. Massa lost it, as did Piquet and Glock. Kimi got in a tiz and so did Hamilton. Piquet hoped a heavy fuel load would catapult him up the order. But Buemi was a little too optimistic and ended up flinging him into the first corner. Any damage Nelson? Any damage? Uh, for sure damage. That's idiot. Vettel's day hadn't gone well. Sebastian was a little too late on the brakes, locked the rears, lost the car, and hit the wall. Mistake from Hakey sent their hopes crashing. Lost the rear end, and McLaren's only chance of points was gone. But he was so used to finishing off the podium in Monaco, he stopped in the wrong place. And after 78 laps of racing, he went for a light jog. Button was going that extra mile to entertain the crowds. It's embarrassing. I can't even keep up with freaking Renner in front of me. My tyres have gone off. I'm heavier than a freaking boat. Guys, you need to be in a new car. We need a new car to be able to win these races. A brake problem in the closing seconds of Q1 hurled Sutil into the tyre wall. Adrian was okay, but the car was wrecked and the session red flagged. A mistake by Bourdais proved calamitous. Thank you very much, guys. Wonderful car, wonderful car. Perfect. Thank you. I would say... <laughs> but this spin could have put him out of the race before it even began. He regained control and retook 12th on the grid. The cool conditions had already made Braun's hope of a podium more difficult and this fuel rig problem meant they had to switch to their backup and cost them even more valuable time. The long stop dropped Rubens back to fifth. Uh, to be very honest with you, I wish I can get on the plane and go back home right now. I don't want to talk to anybody in the team because I don't want to understand it will be 
a lot of blah, 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 and I don't want to hear that. You know, Rubens had the 11th fastest time of the race today. You can't win a race, whatever strategy you have, if, you're, if your best lap time is the 11th quickest. It's not possible. Uh, those are the facts. And um, you know, once, uh, once it's calmed down, the problem we have is to get quicker, not what happened today. Oh, something is broken on my car. Hey, Sam. As Barrichello went into turn three, debris from his rear suspension flew off and landed right on the racing line. Massa had already made it into Q3 and was just a few seconds behind the brawn. He went hurtling into the path of the errant spring and into the tyre wall. The spring hit his helmet just above his left eye and the car just went straight on. When Massa arrived at the medical centre, team principal Stefano Domenicali and his manager Nicholas Todd were at his side. problems continued in second practice when Alonso and Heidfeld came to blows. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Good. No, no, no. Keep going, keep going. Push him, push him, push him. But not so careful as to let Grosjean pass, cross the white line and earn a drive-through penalty. It was the 100th Grand Prix victory for a Brazilian driver and Rubens dedicated his victory to close friend Felipe Massa. Ferrari didn't expect Luca to match Massa but hitting Sutil's stationary car in Park Ferme was the end of what could only be described as a bad weekend. But contact with Grosjean behind meant their race was well and truly over. It wasn't just Button and Grosjean who came unstuck. Hamilton and Alga Suari came to blows. And the safety car came out. Rubens, you're on fire. Make sure you stop there to extinguisher. But you're seriously on fire, Rubens, like properly on fire. P0, if you haven't got out already, and I wish you had. But his Ferrari debut didn't quite go to plan. A mistake in Saturday morning practice cut short his running, but he still managed to line up 14th. Sutil's supermarket-style parking sent a mechanic sprawling. Following evidence from Nelson Piquet Sr. on the Sunday at the Hungaro Ring, the FIA went back over the events surrounding Nelson Piquet Jr.'s crash on lap 14 at the first ever night race. Alonso started 15th and pitted on lap 12. Two laps later, Piquet crashed exiting turn 17 and brought out the safety car. As Alonso had already pitted, he made up lots of ground and later went on to win the race. 
Just days before the hearing, Renault announced that they would not dispute the allegations and that its managing director, Flavio Briatori, and its executive director of engineering, Pat Simmons, had left the team. The FIA went through the radio and telemetry, interviewed top personnel and concluded that the three had conspired to cause a deliberate crash. Renault received a suspended disqualification from F1 and were ordered to pay costs. Flavio received a lifetime ban, Pat Simmons a five-year ban, while Piquet received immunity in exchange for volunteering his evidence. Unfortunately for the team, the story just would not go away, and a crash on Friday in the exact same spot for Grosjean was ironic, to say the least. But he didn't take advantage of his teammate's early exit. He took a chance, but it didn't exactly go to plan. And he ruined Heidfeld's reliability record. Adrian made his move, got in a spin, and didn't appear to see the BMW Sauber. A flashback to Massa last year. The brake wear continued and soon became a failure. Singapore proved troublesome for all the championship contenders. A problem engaging neutral at his second stop cost Rubens valuable time. The rain cleared on Saturday, but in Q1 the chaos had just begun. A quick fix from Toro Rosso got Buemi back out. Kovalainen was lucky to catch the car and avoid the gravel. In Q2, Alguasuari wasn't so fortunate. He went in too hard, touched the grass, then had a huge crash in Q2. but another accident for Boemi in Q2 was pushing it for Toro Rosso. He tried to make it back for repairs, but just littered debris all over the track. Kovalainen lost the car through the high-speed turn eight and brought out the red flags for a third time. A new gearbox and a penalty followed suit. Weber was in for his second pit stop in two laps, thanks to a loose headrest. His team opted for a highly technical solution, sticky tape. Giancarlo could have had the jump on the McLaren, but he didn't make it stick. Zuka's barriers seem to have a magnetic attraction for the Toro Rossos. It was soon a case of man overboard. Grosjean was left with a sinking feeling in Saturday morning practice. When the session restarted, visibility was terrible and the swamp-like conditions caught many drivers out. The red flag reappeared early in Q2. Liuzzi aquaplaned and speared into the barriers. And he nearly took Fissi Keller with him. And poor Alonso was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And saw some of the debris up close too. 
Their race was finished, but it was just the beginning of Jano's anger. He was overwhelmed by emotion. Lollipop was lifted way too early and fuel was showered into the path of the former McLaren driver. The brawn mechanics took over where the McLaren guys left off, while Heike got a 25 second penalty added after the race for the unsafe release. The flames burned themselves out and Kimi continued, but not without suffering sore eyes as he left his visor up. It's a good job refueling his band for 2010. And disaster struck. Kazuki was incredibly lucky not to be hit by the cars behind. become champion with fifth place. The result ensured Braun secured the constructor's title as well. Unbelievable, mate. It's just sinking in. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you so much for this season. It's been uh, oh, ups and downs, but very, very emotional. Thank you so much, everyone, and congratulations to the whole team. You've been magnificent all year. Well done, Johnson. Fantastic. It's, uh, it's been a hard way of doing it the second half, but we got there. Fantastic. Well done and get back here quickly for a bit of champagne. Um, in the end, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what's problem, but maybe I, you have I don't a have any problem. Feeling on him, I don't understand, really. Sorry. Uh -huh. I think for all your sakes, we'll stop that now. <laughs> Wari took inspiration from Vettel one step too far. His team weren't ready, and with race leader Vettel about to pit, Red Bull were not going to service the Toro Rosso. A little confused, maybe, but the Red Bull mechanics weren't phased. Yeah! Well done, Mark! Great drive! Brilliant! Button's tremendous achievement ensured back to back British champions. Vettel showed he has huge potential, Lewis stayed ahead of Kimi, and Rosberg scored all of Williams' points. Alonso did what he could in his last season for Renault. Kovalainen struggled to match his teammate. Heidfeld was happy to nudge ahead of Kubica and Boemi had a good first season. Sutil was unlucky not to have scored more. Kobayashi impressed in his two races and six drivers failed to score. Eight victories as well as both titles was a phenomenal achievement for Braun's debut season. The combined total of McLaren and Ferrari didn't come near the top two and Toyota had a strong finish to their final season. BMW Sauber leapfrogged Williams at their last race while Force India were happy to have scored their first ever points. But the season belonged to Jensen Button.